nobody's going to help you. The government is not going to help you. Nobody else is going to bail you out. Nobody will ever care about your finances more than you. Do you see more and more people coming to you or hear about people that are having money issues? Yeah, absolutely. And that's actually an unfortunate thing. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm here to help, but um, I am actually seeing uh, many more clients who recently lost their jobs and they're having a hard time finding a new one. Um, so I had a, a someone working in the sector and got let go and trying to apply to as many jobs as possible. I just couldn't get a reply. So instead of going through the finances, we actually sat down and went through the resume of his and just uh, uh, some of the interview tricks that he can go through. Um, and I still don't know what's going on with that, but then I'm seeing, I'm definitely seeing a lot more job losses uh, just based on who I have seen. Now I haven't seen like every single American, but uh, the labor market has been slowing down as we saw with the unemployment situation that triggered the SOM rule. <laughs> Uh, two weeks ago, right? And uh, uh, panic in the Wall Street. But that I think that's when the Wall Street realized that the, uh, the Main Street is struggling. And that's kind of um, a wake up call to the people and say, whoa, you know, the labor market is not what it used to be. You can't just quit your job and find another job the next day. And now it's a lot more tightened. Uh, companies are laying people off because interest rates are still high because it is much more expensive to borrow money. So those are the things that I do talk to my current clients, my long-term clients and say, hey, just be ready for maybe a, a little toughness going forward uh, with the labor market. So that's something that you want to watch out for. Here's a situation here. You, you take your daughter to the park, you're sitting on a park bench eating a sandwich, and you hear some people that are obviously in distress because of the debt they're in. They'll, they don't think they'll ever be able to afford anything. They don't think they'll be able to get out of it. What's your elevator pitch to them? Say, no, no, hold on a second. What are you saying to them to say, no, no, no we, you can get on the right path? Yeah, so I, well, I know this is a hypothetical, but I wouldn't talk to people and just say, oh, you can do this, you know, like <laughs> to strangers. Um, but I would say, you know, hey, um, there, I think there's a way to uh, get out of that situation. So if a you know, more realistic scenario, let's say you sit down with me and say, hey, you know, I don't think I can afford this. And you know, what do you think of this economy? And the, it's just situation is so bad. I think we're in a recession, uh, you know, and I, then I would say, well, you know, nobody, you have to realize that nobody's going to help you. The government's not going to help you. Nobody else is going to bail you out. Nobody will ever care about your finances more than you. So that's what I would say and say, you have to take care of your own. You have to take care of your family. So do you think the government is going to bail out all the student loans? Maybe, but are they going to get you out of poverty? Probably not. So are you, you know, we still have homeless issues, right? And for so many years, you have to take control of what you got. Take a look at what you have, what you're spending. Become the CEO of your household when it comes to finances and surround yourself with people, the good people who can help you. A COO, a VP who can help make sure that your house is running, you have a roof over your head, you got utilities running your house, and you have food on the plate. Those are the things that you, the basic things that you need to look at and say, all right, can I do this? What am I doing wrong? This is not working. I need to find a new plan. That's when you should reach out to a professional and say, what do I do here? And that's when people reach out to me and say, I am stuck. I don't know what to do with, with this car loan. I don't know what to do with this credit card. I don't know where to start. And that's when I say, you, well, hold on. Let's start here. Let's look at what's going on with your income. Let's look at what's going on with your expenses. Then let's look at your debt. Because the first thing I want to make sure is that you got food on the plate. Now, the second thing I want to make sure, well, that's probably the third thing. The first thing I want to make sure is that you have a roof over your head. Do you have things running your house? Do you have transportation to get from play, uh, point A to point B? Do you have food on the plate? Do you have insurance that you're paying every month? And that's uh, the other thing is that I, I was reading that about <clears throat> the one in five people between the ages of 18 and 35 are no longer insured. They have no car insurance anymore because they can't afford it. So those are the things that I would say, let's go over those and 
figure out what's going on. What is the root cause? What are the con uh, contributing factors to where you are right now? Can you explain good debt versus bad debt? Because I'm sure you've experienced <laughs> the bad yeah. versus the good. I got a, a, a mortgage. Is that good? I, look, I, I've spoken to people who said never have a mortgage, but is, is mortgage good debt? And uh, I know the credit cards is really bad debt. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess uh, in a simple term, you can call this good and that bad. But when I look at debt, <clears throat> I need to see if this is going to benefit my uh, financial planning. Is this debt going to help me invest more and increase my net worth? So when it comes to mortgage debt, um, yeah, I, I believe it is good debt as long as I'm, uh, I have a timeline on when I want to pay it off by. So if I have a 30 year fixed mortgage, I want to uh, just keep paying down the minimum and I don't put anything extra towards it when I'm in my 20s, 30s or 40s because I want to invest that extra that I would put towards my mortgage into my investments because that's going to grow a lot more. Now, if I'm in my 50s and I look at my mortgage debt and I say, well, I got 15 years left and I'm going to be 65 by the time I retire, uh, say I want to retire at 57 instead of 65 then I'm going to have a plan to pay it down by 57 because when I truly retire, no longer doing any of this, having a conversation with Andrew, you, then I want to be completely debt free because that, then I don't want to have any risks in my, uh, my overall net worth. I don't want to have any line items on my liabilities. That's just me because I am, uh, that's how I look at when it comes to debt. Um, debt is a tool that can build. So if you start a business and you need to take out a business loan, say $20,000 to get you started on uh, to have a business because you have a great idea, your revenue is going to go up and you're going to hire some people to help you, then that could be a good debt, but it can become a bad debt as um, if you bit more than you can chew. So if you took out a $50,000 business loan and your business just goes bankrupt, it didn't take you anywhere, then it becomes a bad debt Then you're going to have to pay back. And when it comes to credit card spending, um, we have a lot of credit, credit card spending issue right now. And I was just actually uh, reading the news uh, before we got on the call. I think it was like we just reached uh, $1.14 trillion in credit card debt. And it's just it's the one of the fastest pace ever. And uh, a lot of people would say, well, it's inflation. Take a look at your spending. Is it really inflation or is it because you're spending on something that you don't need? And those are the things. Uh, and uh, I was reading that, you know, uh, I think it was like Gen X has the highest average credit card balance with $9,300 right now. So bad debt is something that you just don't get anything out of. When you argue and say that you have a credit card reward program for 3% cash back, but you're carrying it, carrying a balance every month that charges you 25%, that's, you're not doing anything in that personal loan. What did you use it for? Did you use it to grow something? If not, that's a bad debt. Car loan, I would say it's probably the second worst type of loan out there is a car loan because it's a you take out a loan at, let's say, 8% interest rate, and that's depreciating in value by 15% annually, depending on the type of car you buy. So that's something that I'm like, man, that is I would never take out a car loan ever again. <laughs>